just like what is happening in Palestine as we speak right now. They use rock. They throw rock and they throw the tide and Kalosloff powder. They throw it against the enemy. Yet the enemy is using heavy guns, killing, destroying the city, hospital, children, schools. Construction everywhere is being decapitated by these enemies. And the world is looking. In fact, America have sent Johnson fleet. It left Cincinnati, Ohio to come and join. That fleet has been there for a very long time. It's a huge fleet. It's like a whole town. Johnson, Johnson 2 fleet. It's a, it's a naval warship. It's on the way. It might have reached by now going to support Israel. With tons and tons of guns that pierce through the heart, that do destruction and terrorize. They're supporting it. And you begin not to understand. The Reconstruction Era was during the Balfour Declaration. In the early 40s, when the Jewish had no place to go. So the Balfour Declaration gave them the latitude. They draw, they cut off part of Palestine for them to live there when no nation was prepared to accept them. No nation on the face of the earth was prepared to accept them. But their brethren, their cousins, Ishmael, Ismail, and Ishaq, they were cousins, they were brothers. So the children of them twain became cousins. They said, my subhanAllah, come, come, take this part. They allowed them. And they lived there. And guess what? And they started inching, 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 and today, look at it. The Jewish people, they don't have a home. They are the only nation on the face of the earth that have no abode. They don't have a place to call their own. Show me where, how, history, bring it. Let's look at it. They don't have. When Abraham left, Ur of Chaldea, in the, by the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because his community worship whatever they worship. So Allah took him from that part and he came to Iraq, Mesopotamia, modern day Iraq. And that's where he lived. And he moved from place to place as Allah showed him. So he began to have children. Isaac, eventually Jacob came in. Eventually the 12th tribe of Israel from Jacob. They don't have a nation to call their own like you have a nation. This is where my great-great-grandfather was born. This is my root. The Israelites don't have a nation. So from the 12 tribes of Israel, one of them became so powerful. And that is Yusuf alayhi salam. Somehow we know the story. His own brethren, through jealousy, they tried to destroy him. But somehow he ended up in Egypt. You know the story. So he became a minister. And so he asked for his mother and father and brethren, all of you, come. I'm a minister here. You have the luxury of staying in uh, Egypt. See, they don't have a place. So Joseph gave them, you know, a land called Goshen. Goshen is part of uh, Egypt where they live and they begin to have children. Eventually, the community of the Egyptian sort of not liking them because of their behavior. Allah sent Moses to take them, you know, to let them cross the river. And hopefully, if they behave right, Allah will give them the land of honey and milk. So they cross over. Look at what they did to Moses. They've seen a lot of miracle upon miracles, but yet they, they were slagging behind. They said, man, we're tired of all this thing that is happening. We would like for you, Moses, take us back to Egypt. Because they, after all, we would eat the leftover of our masters. It's even better for us than to live in the jungle. We want manna. Allah sent manna and salwa. They enjoy that. Still, they never thank Allah enough. So Moses was saying in the wilderness, because of your unbelief, you stiff-necked, you arrogant, how long shall you see the damnation of God Almighty through your behavior? So they moved from oasis to oasis, from landmark to the landmark. So they already 
the Israelites, they don't have a nation to call their own. They never had a nation. So Palestine was given to them. And look at what is happening today. Look at what is happening today. It's so very sad. The world has turned its face away from what is happening So I believe eventually it's going to be a time that justice will be saved. Whatever Israel is doing, they are digging a hole for themselves to fall in. Israel is creating, you know, a guillotine for herself. Whatever she's doing right now, the world is seeing. It is the way of Allah. Let her do whatever she want to do. She's enjoying doing it, but there's going to be a time that the time is up, the cup is full, and that will be too late. It's coming, and it's coming, and it will come. Reason, logic, proof that something has to give. Whatever is happening in this world, there's got to be a time that someone will redress this information, that this thing that is going on. You don't want to listen about that kind of you know, mis misconception. So Islam is not a terrorist nation. We are fighting for what is our own. I mean, I'm not going to let you come to my house and take whatever you want to take in my house. I'm going to have to fight back at least, even if I'm going to be throwing stone. I'm going to be doing that, and that is exactly what the children of Palestine are doing today. They have to fight their aggression. But if they do something, they say, oh, they're terrorists. Who is the terrorist? Man, we have to define the word terrorist. Who did the First World War? Who made those heavy guns and killed millions and millions of people? Who did that? Is it the Muslim did that? Or the Western people who created the propaganda did that? Who fought Second World War? Hitler. Who did that? Who went to Japan and dropped bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima? Wiped up the whole system, the whole community wiped up. Right now as I'm speaking, if you go to Nagasaki and Hiroshima, some part of that community does not grow food because the chemical wastes have gone deep into the earth that buy it from you know, producing anything. Who does that? 